announcements, or actually just one announcement to begin uh, the service today. And that is, uh, as we've announced, Faith Weavers has gone two weeks now. And the good news, we were, we've lost some of our help. And we're always looking for volunteers, by the way. But two of our teachers stepped forward, and uh, we were, we're just going to go with snacks. Well, now we're going back to a light meal for our kids, as we've done for years. So we're grateful for those volunteers. But also, if you can't help or assist in any way, there is one way you could help, and that is uh, with the purchase of groceries. Uh, I've asked them if they could put together a menu. We're going to provide a list of groceries we're going to anticipate. So most of you that would like to kind of clean out your cupboard a little bit, uh, spaghetti, things like that, of course. And there's also a donation box in the back. Faith Weavers is a wonderful ministry in our church. We've talked about it. Uh, but one thing to know, uh, the number of children that are not members of our congregation that attend Faith Weavers is truly, truly amazing. So this is really fantastic outreach for our community, partnering with parents and bringing up their children. So if you want to help with the expenses for the meal, like I said, there's a uh, box there in the back. And again, we're always looking for volunteers. So with that, we'll begin our service with the singing of our opening song. Jesus, the name above every other name. 
begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's epistle, James urges, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Let us go to God, echoing David's words of Psalm 54, appointed for today. O oh God, save me by your name. O oh God, hear my prayer. Give ears to the words of my mouth. James' words of today's epistle guide our confession. Gracious God, we confess that because we have desired friendship with the world, we forget that we need enmity with God. We confess that our passions are at war within us. We have had bitter jealousy and selfish ambition inside us. In all humility, we come to you, Holy Lord, seeking your peace to calm the war within us. God has not given up on you. He yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. Indeed, he gives more grace. James writes, a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And in his death and resurrection, Jesus gave his righteousness and established peace between us and God. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O oh God, in your infinite grace, you have forgiven our warring against your will and rule. Grant that the peace of the Lord has, will be evident in our humble service to you and the people around us each day. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Jeremiah chapter 11, beginning at the 18th verse. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson this morning is from James chapter 3, beginning at the 13th verse. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire to not have, so you murder, you covet, you cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly. You spend it on your passions. You adulterous people. Do you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is no, to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Lord, Lord. It went on from there and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in their midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. We join in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be 
seated and we invite the children to come forward for the children's message at this time. <laughs> Besides Jesus. <laughs> you know, that's that's good. That is a very good answer. I appreciate that answer so much. All right, well, how about this? Oh. If someone came up to you and pushed you on the ground, is that fun? No. No, okay. Would you go back and push them down? No. Oh, okay. If someone came up and calls you a bad name, like, uh, you meanie, do you go back and say to them, oh, no, okay. So you, you won't be like the person who's being mean? No. I'm impressed. You guys have been very well taught, very well disciplined. That is wonderful. Do you think your parents are like that? Okay. Do you think your parents have, your parents have to learn? How to not be like, oh, you meanie. No? <laughs> oh, you guys are making this a fun morning. I appreciate that. Well, if someone came up and stole from you, like say they came up and took your pudding cup, the best pudding cup you've ever had, would you go back and take theirs? No. Wow. You just asked them to give it back? Okay, so what if they don't give it back? Okay. Well, I am very well impressed by how much you've learned. Sometimes, some people don't like to give stuff back. You know what they do? They come up and they start fighting with each other. Is that good or bad? Bad. Should we be like the person who start fights? Right, we shouldn't start fights. What should we do? Hmm? Listen, just leave. Should we be kind and try to reason with them? Okay. Should we ask for forgiveness? You know, you're like, I'm sorry that you took this, but I am willing to forgive you. Is that something that we should do? Good. You know, Jesus taught us the same thing. If someone did something bad to you, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to forgive them. You know, seek, you know, seek peace between you. You know, like if someone's causing you fights, you're supposed to stop. But you're supposed to also forgive one another. And so therefore, you be like the coolest person you've ever met, which is Jesus. So you be like Jesus to them by being kind, not fighting, and asking for forgiveness. All right, you youngsters want to pray with me? All right, let's fold our hands, bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for hearing from these young children as uh, they have learned rightly that they should not begin fights, quarrels, or call each other uh, mean but to be kind and to look out to you for all their things. In your son's name we pray. <coughs> Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats now. Thank you.
full of mercy and good fruits, impartial, insincere, and a harvest of righteousness is sown among men, sown in peace by those who make peace. To live according to the wisdom from above of God means peace for you and others around you. But these Christians did not want to live that way at all. Rather, they wanted to be just like the world. James warns them that what will happen if they chase after the world. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. To spend it on your passions, you adulterous people. <coughs> these fellow Christians have turned their back on God. They have given into their selfish, sinful desires. No longer do they submit to God and ask what He has taught them. Rather, they've compromised their faith, their values, to the point of making the world their friend and God their enemy. So, what does this have to do with us? Easy. Everything. James is not writing to these churches as a joke or to make light of a situation. It is with all seriousness. These Christians are not following Christ anymore. They have started to chase after their own wants and desires. And you and I can easily fall into this trap as well. The reason this happens is that there is this tendency to become like other people. You and I want to fit in. Everyone does. Now this has changed as the older we have gotten. So as children, you, want, you might have changed your hairstyle. Like, do I, do I comb it back to look cool? Do I mess it up to look, to look a little messy? Or do I brush it to the side? Oh, whatever way you choose. Or my personal favorite as a kid uh, was that my mother and my grandmother would usually spit in their hands after, I got done, after they got done combing my hair for church and slick back my hair so to show off my colic as a young kid. And man, it was... A big colic. Oof. But after that, after I got to church, I would run up while they were looking and I would just quickly mess up my hair. I can't do that now. It's kind of held in place by some hair gel. <laughs> and as kids, you and I didn't change so much on the inside, but rather on the outside. And we changed our looks. Then let's move a few years ahead. The teenage years. The most awkward and pivotal time in our lives. Yes, looks are everything. You gotta wear the right shoes, the right clothes, you gotta even wear the right makeup. But this is a time in life where our faith, our values are tested. For instance, you see one teenager start to change in a certain way. First, their clothes start to change, their style is different. Second, their behavior starts to look a little different too. They start to change their like this, their core values. They start to become rude, mean, even arrogant. Thinking that is this is acceptable behavior because all the other because all the other kids are doing it, and they are the cool kids. And now as adults, you and I want to believe that this type of behavior, you know, has passed. That people have grown out of it. And yes, yeah, sometimes yes, and sometimes no. As adults, we're a little more prone to change. Prone to change because we want something to happen. What? Well, not a day from now, not a week from now, not surely not an hour. We want it right now. You go as far as to get into each other's faces, acting out of anger rather than love. Not helping our neighbor as we should. All because we're willing to compromise our values to get what we want, to get what we desire most. And when this embracing happens, we make changes that are more convenient for the world. Instead of looking for God for wisdom, we look inward, into ourselves, caught up in our own understanding, our own reasoning. And thus, we start to make excuses. Slowly, but surely, each time you and I make, we make compromises with the world, things we say that we do, things we know that are wrong, the more and more we become enveloped in our own sin. 
Don't fall for this. It tricks you to think that there is nothing to worry about. This way of thinking, this wisdom, is of the world. Even James calls the wisdom a man, earthly, unspiritual, even demonic. It does nothing but lead you down a path, lead you astray, away from the truth, where you change for the sake of the world, not for God. And as Christians, we are taught not to never compromise for the sake of the world. Whenever Christ taught any lesson, a parable, or even turned tables over in the temple, he always pointed us back to God, back to his wisdom. For God alone is the true source of wisdom in this world in this universe, in your lives and mine. No compromises were ever found in the wisdom of God. Never compromise for the sake of this world. Never. And this is what James is getting at when addressing the numerous different churches in his letter. Never compromise the truth of God's word for the sake of this world. These Christians believe that God Believe that they could act in a manner that was all right. They believe that they could treat anyone in whatever manner they so desired because they have been led away by the wisdom of the world. But James did not want this to continue. <coughs> James Lever had two goals in mind. One, to call the people back, to call them out of their sinfulness, call them out on their heinous actions. And two, to call these church people, these churches, these wayward Christians back to God, back to what it meant to live as Christians in this world. James tells them, submit yourselves therefore to God. Submit. By reminding them to submit to God doesn't mean that they're going to lose any freedom. Rather, they would have gained more. Rather, they would have, by telling them to submit to God, James is calling them to live in peace with God and their neighbor, not to lower their stature over anyone, and thus causing greater fighting amongst themselves, but to live in peace. Peace with God and peace with their neighbor. To come before God and repent. Repent of their thoughts, their words, their actions, all of which have been influenced by the wisdom of this world. By repenting, they will become humbled, humbled before the Lord, for this is what God loves. That his people come to him and repent of their sins. For he then forgives them of their sins. God loves that his people follow the example set forth by his son. And that is why James reminds them, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. You see, this is what you and I are taught by Christ who set the example. Christ didn't come to this world to teach us to become a people focused on ourselves, a people who are supposed to listen to themselves and their own reasoning. <coughs> this isn't what Christ taught, showed, or even displayed. Rather, it was the opposite. Christ came and humbled himself. He is the King of kings, Lord of lords. Yet he had no place to lay his head. He traveled around the countryside teaching and preaching to the people. This is what Christ has shown to us. He showed you and me and everyone else true humility. He did so by becoming a servant. The God of the universe, Lord and creator of all things, who gave up his throne, put on human flesh to live among his creation, his people, even took the time to get on his hands and knees and wash. I mean, actually touched the gross, dirty feet of the disciples after walking in the day of heat and in the dirt. But Christ didn't stop there. No, he even humbled himself to the point of death, death on a cross, the worst and most excruciating pain anyone could ever endure. But Christ did it anyways, for you and for me. At any point, Christ could have ended it, gone against the will of his Father. And not 24 hours before, he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done. Through his humility, Christ even taught us how to live with one another. 
avoiding conflicts with each other, helping one another in need, respecting and loving our neighbor. You were taught you and me how to be meek in our wisdom. This doesn't mean being weak in any sense of the word, but being humble with our knowledge and to share it with others. Christ never compromised. He never gave in to the wisdom of man. He never rejected the will of his Father. He held true even when the devil tempted him in the wilderness. Or when the Pharisees tripped him, tried tripping him up and seeing what if he would go against the law. Or when the people wanted to make him an earthly king. He never compromised. And therefore, James points us back to Christ. To live as Christians, to follow the example set forth by Christ. Not just some man, but our God. If Christ never compromised, neither should you. Never compromise your integrity, your faith, your values. Cling to God and your faith. And always trust the wisdom that comes down from above. For what we do, it changes us. And it changes us for the better. Never compromise. Amen. Now we as Christians, may we continue to grow and to learn what it meant to live as Christians in this world. Following the example set forth by Christ. And following his true humility. May we always be humble and be humble before the Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.